Hey internet, this is Jacob Clifford and welcome to Ecom Movies. And I want to thank all of you that voted on Twitter. You demanded it, so I'm supplying it. Today we're going to analyze The Lion King. Now I bet you're thinking to yourself, there's probably not very much economics in a movie about lions in the savannah. But there is. For example, this scene. Did you see the economics? No? Well, you're going to be surprised. Now, I promised to go back and look at that scene with Simba, but first, let's connect the story with some concepts. Now, you already know the plot. Simba is the heir apparent, and he's taught how to be a good leader by his father, Mufasa, and he's excited about one day becoming the king. I'm gonna be a mighty king, so enemies beware. Spoilers! Mufasa dies, and Simba runs away to escape his past and meet some friends who also have some emotional baggage. Bad things happen, and you can't do anything about it, right? Right. Wrong! When the world turns its back on you, you turn your back on the world. To cope with his heartache and loss, Simba adopts a nihilistic or who cares approach towards the world. And after he grows up, he realizes he's not getting anywhere, so he decides to go back and fight Scar and take his place as the rightful king. Wait, where's the economics? Look hard. A king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. One day, Simba, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. Economists call this concept creative destruction, right? The sun has set on all sorts of jobs like blacksmiths, milkmen, and switchboard operators, and the economic forces that destroyed those jobs created new jobs and new industries. About a hundred years ago, jobs making horse-drawn carriages disappeared, but there were new jobs making cars. And so out with the old and in with the new. That's the idea of creative destruction. When we die, our bodies become the grass and the antelope eat the grass. And so, we are all connected in the great circle of life. And this also applies to businesses, right? They die all the time. But when a company goes out of business, they don't just disappear. Their assets are often sold off to the next generation of entrepreneurs. Think about the last restaurant that went out of business in your hometown. Usually another restaurant or business takes its place and the circle of economic life continues. And if that next company doesn't produce what customers want, then they're going to go out of business and somebody else is going to take their place. A great example of this is the company Toys R Us. It was once the king of the toy industry, what economists call a category killer. That's a retailer that specializes so effectively on one category of products that it drives out all the smaller competitors. Don't let that smile fool you. Jeffrey the giraffe killed thousands of jobs and mom and pop stores. But now because consumers prefer buying toys through Amazon and Walmart, Toys R Us, the once king of the toy industry, is dead. Long live the king. Kodak, Blockbuster, Compact, Circuit City, TWA, these were all industry kings. But instead of mourning them or trying to bring them back, we need to learn from their mistakes. The great kings of the past looked down on us from those stars. Really? Yes. Now, sometimes politicians try to revive a dying company or industry by giving them a bailout. And most economists think that's justified in some cases. But in most cases, the government is just prolonging the inevitable. Ah! Okay, now we have enough information to go back and look at that stampede scene with Simba. So stop right there. Do you see the economics? Notice that Simba is hand drawn. But all the wildebeest in the background, those are all drawn by a computer. That's economics. The Lion King came out in 1994, just one year before another Disney movie that changed animation forever. Can you guess what movie that was? I despise guessing games. In 1995, it was Toy Story, the first full-length computer animated movie. It was revolutionary and audiences loved it and suddenly the hand-drawn movies that people have been watching for 60 years seemed old-fashioned and outdated. And within 10 years, Disney responded to consumer demand and closed several of its animation studios and fired about half its workers. Thousands of traditional animators were out of a job, but thousands of new jobs were created in computer animation. And again, the point I'm trying to make is in the free enterprise system, innovation and progress always create winners 
and losers. Specific jobs, companies, industries, or even whole sectors of the economy sometimes die off. Take US manufacturing jobs. For nearly 100 years, the United States was the king of manufacturing. Americans produced the most stuff and the best stuff. But over the last 50 years, the US has slowly produced less and less stuff and is moving towards a service-based economy. Looks like the winds are changing. Ah, uh, change is good. Yeah, but it's not easy. Many people's first reaction to this is to get angry, to blame companies that outsource American jobs, or to blame our trading partners like China. If it weren't for you, Mufasa would still be alive. It's your fault he's dead. Do you deny it? No. Then you're guilty. And some citizens and even politicians demand that the government limit trade with other countries or set tariffs that make imports more expensive. Economists call this protectionism because the goal is to protect American jobs and businesses from foreign competitors. But most economists don't think that protectionism is the right answer. Everything you see exists together in a delicate balance. As king, you need to understand that balance. Just like Simba, America needs to learn that if all we do is miss the past, we're gonna miss the future. I know what I have to do, but going back means I'll have to face my past. I've been running from it for so long. Ow! Jeez, what was that for? It doesn't matter! It's in the past! <laughs> yeah, but it still hurts. Oh yes, the past can hurt. But the way I see it, you can either run from it or learn from it. Ah! You see? For many Americans, this is a sad economic reality, but most of the manufacturing jobs of our fathers and grandfathers are gone. Most of them are never coming back, right? The king is dead. But don't blame globalization and don't blame trade. You gotta blame technology. Here's my little secret. American workers are expensive, which is one of the main reasons why so many companies 30 plus years ago decided to produce things overseas. But now, automation technology has gotten so much better and cheaper that if you try to get producers to manufacture things in the United States, those jobs are gonna be done by machines. Those jobs are gone forever. But wait, what's gonna happen to our economy? If protectionism isn't gonna work, then how do we make America great again? Well, listen to Mufasa. Simba. You have forgotten me. No. How could I? You have forgotten who you are and so forgotten me. Look inside yourself, Simba. You are more than what you have become. You must take your place in the circle of life. How can I go back? I'm not who I used to be. What once made America great and will continue to make it great is not manufacturing jobs. It's innovation. It's finding new ways to make people's lives better off. Now, whether that's producing things or services, it doesn't matter. To compete in the new global economy, Americans shouldn't wait around for jobs that'll never come back. Americans should get educated, learn new skills and new industries, start businesses, and not give up when things become hard. And it's just that simple. If innovation and education and getting better remain the goal, then you and the economy are gonna succeed in the circle of economic life. Hey, thank you so much for watching this episode of Econ Movies. There's a lot of people who need the message in this episode. So right now, share it with one of your friends and give it a like, but get it out there so more people understand this idea, okay? Please. Click up here if you want to watch other episodes of Econ Movies and click down here if you want to watch the bonus features for this video. Also, if you're a teacher, look in the description below for some special things for you and your students. Thanks for watching. Until next time.